Hello and welcome to my channel. Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about how Islam ensures its followers to be poor. Many Muslim scholars and apologists usually say that Islamic finance is superior and give benefits to the people. They brought up the topic of zakat. They will compare tax in the UK for example, is 20% for the average people. While Islam, only state 2.5% zakat to be paid to the Islamic government. Just like tax, there is a minimum income before a zakat is applied. As far as income cuts are concerned, it appears to be that Islam gives the people more buying power. But is this the reality? In a modern world, the people had to pay multiple taxes, for example, income tax, VAT and so on. Islam also have zakat for other things. But most scholars never mentions it when they are promoting Islam. And the way it implements the zakat on other things will make your wealth deplete continuously. Other than the monthly income zakat, Islam also applies zakat on all of your wealth, be it your property, gold jewelers, savings, pension fund, crypto, bonus, inheritance money, and all of them are charged at 2.5%. Even when your savings are static, that is, you no longer top up the amount, every year, Islam will still take 2.5%. As comparison, modern economic systems do not touch your savings at all. What you earn is taxed once, the rest is yours indefinitely. Islam on the other hand, continuously require Muslims to pay 2.5% of savings, until your savings reach the minimum value which is about $6,800. As long as your savings is above this value, Islam will continue to take 2.5% of it. And as for your gold jeweler is that you keep, that is charged 2.5% to every year. Imagine owning a gold bracelet that you keep in the cabinet statically, but you have to pay for it every year. What a joke. Then, there is the Umrah and Hajj obsession. My own mom has been to Mecca five times. Umrah and Hajj is basically an Islamic obligatory vacation, not to be happy but to feel worthless and wallow in self-pity. Usually Muslims do this when they are older. Many supposedly have repented from their free lives when they were young, and start to be a good Muslim when they are older. Sort of preparing for death. Imagine you are only 45 or 50 years old and you enter a phase of preparation for death. For many, life has just started to begin at 40. We start to have good savings, our kids have grown and able to fend for themselves. We could enjoy our lives for ourselves. But for most Muslims, this is the time to spend all that money for Islam. Going for Umrah or Hajj is not cheap. It costs about $8,000 for the cheapest package. And with the recent upgrade around Mecca, a premium package could cost around $15,000 to $20,000 per person. Even though Islam says that Hajj is obligatory only if you can afford it, many Muslims empty their savings just for this purpose. Some even taken up loans. Umrah is just like Hajj, but it is made for trial runs, especially for those who are scared they do the Hajj rituals incorrectly. The smart one is Saudi, of course. I guess they created this ritual as a way to attract tourists to their country. I mean, how else do you attract hundreds of millions of people to a barren desert land? Just say Allah asked you to do it. And the funny part is most Sunni Muslims accuse the Saudi to be Wahhabi, a deviant sect of Islam, and yet continues to pour billions of dollars to them by going for Hajj and Umrah every year. <laughs> Another thing is that Islam teaches its followers to give charities. Don't get me wrong, giving to the poor is okay, but Islam tells Muslims to do charity excessively. Let's take a look at a few verses that promote this. Surah al-Baqarah, verse 261 reads, The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed, of grain, which grows seven spikes, in each spike is a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies for whom he wills. This verse is promoting Muslims to give their money to, the way of Allah. What does this mean? The way of Allah, meaning is wide, but usually it means, giving to any kind of Islamic causes. For example, a scholar doing Islamic program, 
or even the Palestinian war. Another Surah Ali Imran, verse 93 reads, Never will you attain the good rewards, until you spend from that which you love. And whatever you spend, indeed, Allah is knowing of it. Again, it says a Muslim will never be good, unless he spends his wealth for Islamic causes. It is not optional. A Muslim must spend their money for Islam, or risk being a bad person. And another Surah al-Baqarah, verse 274, a sinister verse reads, Those who spend their wealth, in Allah's way, by night and by day, secretly and publicly, they will have their reward with their Lord. And no fear will there be concerning them, nor will they grieve. Take a closer look, this verse is saying if you spend your wealth in Allah's way, then you will have no fear and should not grieve. This verse is sneakily implying that if you don't spend your wealth, then you should fear and you should grieve. This is fear tactics in a nutshell. What kind of God is Allah? Why would he guilt trip his followers for choosing not to give away their hard-earned money? Islam also teaches its followers to hate accumulation of wealth. But we all know, accumulating wealth in a legal way, is very good for everyone. It makes the society richer and able to uplift the livelihood of the people. Competition is healthy. But to Islam, all of this is bad. But when their livelihood is threatened, what will they do? They will beg from the rich. They play victim and become beggars, shamelessly. Where is their Allah and why he does not help his servants? When I was studying the Quran, I found a verse in the Quran that seems to be promoting communism. Surah an nal verse 71 reads, And Allah has favored some of you over others in provision. But those who were favored, would not hand over their provision to those whom their right hands possess, so they would be equal to them therein. Then is it the favor of Allah they reject? This verse is asking to bosses and business owners, why don't you give your money to your workers so that they would be equal to you? So if a boss earns $100,000 a month, instead of paying the worker $2,000 a month, he should be paying $50,000 a month? Is this Quranic wisdom? Where is the logic in that? A boss has to reinvest in his business, he has to pay for the office utilities, equipments, and so many other things. Islam is like a parasite that keeps on leeching on the body till the body dies. It ensures the followers to spend all their wealth for Islamic causes and leaves them to die as paupers. It promotes begging culture, and thus making the society to be lazy. When you try to be rich, it continuously take, and take. And after it takes, it puts the money towards useless activities. It continuously robs you of your happiness. It is no wonder most of Islam's followers are unhappy people. If you like this video, consider to like, share and subscribe. If you wish to support my work on this channel, you can give thanks, or subscribe to my Patreon. Stay away from Islam, and keep Islam out of your lives. Have a nice day.